Welcome to the TDX20 Expo demo. My name is Skip Sauls and I work on the Einstein Analytics product team. And today I'm going to talk to you about a session that we've entitled Interact with Einstein Analytics Dashboards Using Component Methods. So you're probably familiar with Einstein Analytics and you've done things like building dashboards to access your data sets and to interact with them. And you know that we've got some great controls to let you easily build them, edit them, modify them, and work with them. And a lot of users find that there's some great value in that. But not everyone is a data analyst who wants to go into a tool such as Studio. A lot of our users want to embed these into their own Lightning applications. So in the past, we gave you something called the Einstein Analytics Web SDK for interacting with the components using events, Lightning events. And this works great, as we can see in this example, where we can pick a dashboard, we can pick a dimension such as the stage, and then we can pick one of the values here from stage name. So we can pick, for example, qualification, and we'll send it over here, and then click fire. And that sends an event over that tells the component to respond to it. And if you look at this list, you can see that we're doing the same exact thing as if, as if the user had clicked on it, but we're doing it from these custom Lightning components on the left-hand side. At the bottom, you can see the event payload, which is expressed as a JavaScript object or a JSON object, if you prefer. And if you look at this, it's just pure text. And we've added the qualification here to the stage name selection. If we add in something else, such as uh, maybe closed one, like so, it builds up the payload, and we can fire that, and it makes the selection on the right, again, just as if I'd clicked on it. And if I scroll up here, I can see that closed one is now selected. Now this works really well for a lot of situations where you're working in an asynchronous fashion, but the problem is, is you don't always know the state of the current dashboard. And in the past, we've had customers and partners who've had to build event listeners that try to keep track of the state every time something changes. And the problem with that is, is if your component doesn't exist before the dashboard uh, is realized, you may not be able to trap all those events, and it makes it kind of tough to keep things in sync. So what we've done is introduced the notion of dashboard state as a proper first class method, in fact, a set of methods on the components. So now you can actually look at a dashboard and as a external component, you can ask for the state and get it directly. So let's go over here to the left hand side. We're gonna click right here. And I'm gonna push the get state button that is going to call the get state method on that component and it shows this in the middle. Now again, this is not a business user app. This is meant for developers to learn how to use these new APIs. And if we scroll down, we can see that this now goes from existing business here, like you can see right here, and then goes to needs analysis right here. So it's very simple, very logical. And these names map into what we call the queries or what we used to call steps inside the dashboard. And a lot of times uh, this maps to a, a direct field in an object, but because it's analytics, it could be something that's actually done through aggregation or some sort of transformation. Well, let's change this um, on the right-hand side by calling the set state method. So this is the corresponding method where we're gonna push this object into the dashboard. So push set state, and that dashboard will now update to reflect the same state of the two. Now, a cool thing about this is we're showing this for developers so you can learn how it works. And this is a live document, so I can go to this and change it to something like closed one. Oops, I mean, like so. And when I press say, set state now, it sets it on the right-hand side just as if I had gotten it from here and set it directly. So again, you know, your app will not necessarily give anybody a text field. I doubt many business users would want to type this kind of thing. But you can imagine your Lightning components modifying this as they select something, as they click something in a record page, and so forth. And we can go back and forth between them like so. You can also do things like store this state and use it later. Um, it's very flexible, very open, and it's an object that you can just look at just like anything else in JavaScript. In fact, it has all the different assets in here uh, for the data sets, uh, for the pages, and then all the various selections and that sort of thing. So with that, we'd like you to try some of these uh, sample apps out. Uh, we've got a great developer center that you'll see over in the resources um, that has links off into various trailheads and docs and samples and that sort of thing. 
And we look forward to talking to you all on the uh, Trailblazer community.